Welcome to the Skill Cap channel. If you're subscribed, chances are you're pretty smart. This is the Smart People channel, where we make big brain plays and know all the secrets in World of Warcraft that nobody else does. And no, we're not talking about boomer knowledge like Shadow Word, Deathing Blinds, and the Swifty One-Shot Macro. Sit back and relax as we funnel 50 incredible things you don't know into your brilliant minds in no longer than 10 minutes. But first, we have today's question of the day. What is the craziest thing you've ever seen in PvP? Maybe there was one moment where the enemy team did something that just blew your mind. For us, one of the craziest things we've ever seen in an RPG was a holy priest flying across the entire map to catch a flag, but more on that later. Let us know in the comments what you think is the craziest thing that you've ever seen so far in Shadowlands Season 1. But before we get into some of the craziest spell interactions in PvP, we wanted to let you guys know about the class guides on our website, skillcap.com slash wow. There, you'll find courses and matchup breakdowns for every class. Our guides are produced using the knowledge and experience from some of the best players in the world and are designed to increase your skill and rating in Arena. Joining our website will give you instant access to all of our videos, as well as an invite to our premium Discord, where you can interact directly with pro players. If you want to take your gameplay to the next level, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow today. Did you know that every class is capable of dispelling polymorph and blind? If you get mind games by a priest, you can convert your healing from your spells to damage your partners out of CC like Polymorph and Blind. If your class doesn't have a healing spell, you can even use bandages to break their CC. Did you know that Shadowy Duel is a physical spell? Well, because of this, it can be dodged or parried. When this happens, both you and the rogue get sent to the Shadow Realm, but the rogue will be unable to hit you, meaning you can get your revenge by beating them up when they are helpless. Spear of Bastion is one of the most obnoxious spells in the game, right? Fortunately, a few classes can avoid its endless vacuum. You can get out of the spear by using Greater Fade, Feign Death with the Deeper Stratagem Legendary, Demonic Gateway, or Cloak of Shadows. If you time your death from above or a harpoon at the same time, you can fly across any map when a monk or warlock crosses their port. If you press your DFA or harpoon right before they teleport, your character will fly like Superman across the map to connect on them, even through pillars. If you're a hunter or druid, did you know that you can use Scare Beast or Hibernate against any Night Fae player? Their soul shape turns them into a beast, allowing you to use these spells to put them in a CC that they probably weren't expecting. If you're a Necro Lord, you can increase the size of your Fleshcraft shield with other HP modifiers. Buffs like Bear Form, Power Word, Fortitude, or your Gladiator's Emblem will make the shield from your fleshcraft stronger. You can get a huge shield before the gates open in Arena by using your BM trinket before you fleshcraft. BM hunters are so confusing, right? I mean, you sign up to play Arena, not look at the zoo. If you need some help keeping track of the hunter's real pet, look at its focus bar. If the pet has 120 focus, it is the real one. So kill it instantly to make that hunter QQ. This trick isn't new, but many players don't know that you can shadow meld to immune CC. If you press shadow meld the exact global of CC lands, you will immune the CC entirely. This requires almost perfect timing though, so it isn't always reliable. But if you manage to pull it off, you can be sure to brag about it for the rest of the arena game. The hunt is absolutely broken, right? Well, fortunately, you can prevent all of its damage by just CCing the demon hunter immediately after the cast finishes. This even works with roots and will prevent the hunt from doing any damage. This next trick is fundamental to any damage or healing over time effect in the game. If you reapply a dot or hot before it fades, your next reapplication will refresh its duration and even add up to an additional 33% duration, allowing it to last even longer than what it says on the tooltip. Keep in mind that the bonus duration gets smaller the closer the spell is to expiring. If you are a healer playing with a mage, please start using their food. It regens mana much faster than normal food, so make sure it doesn't go to waste in your bags. If you are playing against a druid, did you know that you can avoid their incapacitating roar entirely? Yep, it can be dodged or parried, so get your evasion or die by the sword ready, and you can completely catch them off guard when you immune their CC. I'm sure you have seen how much pro players spam their spacebar, and you might be thinking to yourself, why? Well, when you're moving in any direction and jump, your character keeps the momentum during the jump, allowing you to move while not even pressing down a movement key. This frees up one of your hands for a split second, allowing you to press an instant cast ability without needing to move your character with your keyboard. Are you sick of your setups getting ruined by kicks? Avoid this problem by baiting kicks before your setups. Use your threatening spells like Hex, Polymorph, or Cyclone to bait kicks from the enemy team 5 to 10 seconds before your kill attempt. That way you can avoid the kick when it really matters. Want to know the best way to juke people off ledge, just run up to any ledge and press your spacebar. Most players will assume you jumped down and will immediately jump down to chase you. 
Additionally, classes like mages and demon hunters can juke people off edges with altar time and vengeful retreat. Did you know that mind control puts a buff on the target? If you're playing blood elf and your partner gets MC'd, you can use your arcane torrent to dispel the mind control. Are you stuck in a 1v1 situation but can't find time to drop combat to mount or drink? Fortunately, some spells like sap and polymorph don't actually put you in combat when you use them, meaning you can quickly mount away or heal up immediately after CCing your opponent. Mind Games is a pretty confusing spell, and there is one huge trick you should know. If you heal a target with Mind Games, the heal happens first, but is usually absorbed and turned into damage if it's less than the damage cap of Mind Games, which is around 11k. If you use a single heal that is greater than the damage cap, it will instantly outheal the Mind Games without doing any damage. That way, if you don't have Dispel for Mind Games, you can just use your biggest heal to power through it. Next, we have some useful toys you might want to collect, starting with Glimmer Flies on a string for Druids. This toy gives your character an uninterruptible cast bar during its duration if you use it while in shapeshift. This cast bar will cover up your other spells, allowing you to get some cheeky cyclones off against your opponents. Moving on to another broken toy, this time for all classes, is Fey Harp. This toy will prevent your character from moving, which might seem like a problem, but if a priest tries to MC you off the bridge on Blade's Edge or Lumber Mill on Arathi Basin, they won't be able to move your character while you're MC. Moving on to some BG specific tips, did you know that you can change trinkets in raided battlegrounds? If you're guarding a base, you can swap between your medallion, relentless, and adaptation trinkets. That way, if your trinket is down, you still have a way to break CC if someone tries to cap on you. Also, if you want to know the fastest way to return the flag on Warsong, Gulch, and Twin Peaks, bind your interact on mouse over to mouse wheel up and mouse wheel down. That way, when the flag is about to drop, you can spam scroll your mouse to quickly return the flag. Now, let's look at some class-specific tricks. Do you play DK and find yourself sick of all the rogues in Arena? Well, one neat trick for getting them out of stealth is using your Unholy Pact. You can use this while micromanaging your pet's position to help sweep out enemy players from stealth. Most DK players know you can use Death's Advance to avoid slows, but many don't pay attention to its immunity to forced movement. This makes DKs able to use Death's Advance through things like Ring of Peace and Ursal's Vortex. Moving on to Demon Hunters, you can abuse the starting area of Dalaran's sewers by staying up there before the waterfall launches you out. When it does, you can use Glide to quickly swoop down on the enemy team. This is useful for avoiding things like sap early on in the arena game. Also, are you tired of people surviving your hunt with CDs? Just juke it! Yes, you can pretend to use the hunt by quickly interrupting its cast, baiting important CDs from the enemy team. Then, once their CDs are over, you can use the hunt for real to catch them off guard. Druids have a very few broken tricks. You can use Ursal's Vortex on certain spots in Black Blackrook Hold and Dalaran Sewers to completely own the enemy team. On Blackrook, you can vortex people through this wall by placing your vortex here, and on Dalaran Sewers, you can vortex players off the ledge by placing it on the bottom while they are on the top ledge. When they try and run away, they will be sucked down. You might already know that you can use vortex against things like Warrior Charge, but did you know it also works against Door of Shadows? This is a bit easier to do since it has a cast time, but you can completely own Venther players by doing this. Even though I play Druid, I will show you one of the most broken things about Necrolord Druid right now. Adaptive Swarm increases the effect of all healing over time effects on the target, and that includes Frenzied Regeneration. So before you use your Frenzy, make sure you put an Adaptive Swarm on yourself and see your HP skyrocket. If this gets nerfed, I blame myself. And finally, if you are a Necrolord and you want to build the biggest possible fleshcraft in the starting room, change your Soulbind or Conduit to include Ursine Vigor. This Conduit will allow you an HP boost when you shift into Bear, so just choose this Conduit it, press bear form and use fleshcraft to get an even bigger shield before the gates open. And once this is done, just swap back to your normal conduit or soul mind. If you are a hunter and you don't have an undead pet by now, you're making a huge mistake. Undead pets are pretty broken because they can't be polymorphed, hibernated, sapped, or hexed. So if you're playing against a team with these CCs, make sure you're bringing an undead companion with you. Mages have a bunch of tricks, starting with altar time. If you use your BM trinket before you altar time, your altar time will snapshot your HP with the BM trinket up. Then, if you cancel your BM trinket before altering back, your health will go back to your snapshot at HP. This allows you to use your BM trinket 
Trinket more like a heal than an HP boost and can sometimes be broken because it isn't affected by dampening. One huge trick that all high rated mages use is spamming Fire Blast during Shifting Power. Because Shifting Power resets your cooldowns by 16 seconds with the Disciple of the Grove conduit, you can use your two Fire Blasts when the Shifting Power is channeling and they will be back up by the time the cast is over. On top of that, Shifting Power can be used to reduce the duration of lockouts. So if you get interrupted on a cast like Ring of Frost, you can use Shifting Power to quickly remove the lockout from the spell. And if you're playing Arcane, you can even make an invisible Ring of Frost in Arena. If you cast Ring during Mass Invisibility, the enemy team won't be able to see it, allowing you to get some cheeky CC. Finally, if you play with Triune Ward, your adaptation won't proc on Hammer of Justice. This is because Prismatic Barrier reduces the duration of harmful magic spells by 25%, putting the Hodge below the duration needed to proc adaptation. As a monk, did you know that you can use your Ring of Peace like a stun? If you put your ring's edge near a wall or pillar, targets will get bounced continuously until your ring is over. During this time, the only thing they will be able to do is use instant cast spells, so it's almost like a 5 second interrupt. Don't know what to do when a priest uses mind games on you while you are getting trained? Just spam Light of the Martyr on your partner. The sacrificed health will actually count as a heal on you, and your partner won't take damage either. Playing red and looking for something to do against a mage sitting on ice block? Generate some holy power! In case you didn't know, you can generate holy power on targets that have immunities like ice block and divine shield. Want to use your Templar's Verdict into a rogue with Cloak of Shadows? You might want to wait a second, literally. For some reason, rogues are immune to Templar's Verdict damage only for the first second of Cloak of Shadows, so just count to one before you dump your holy power. Holy Priests have one of the true one-shot combos in the game. If you mind control a target and immediately give them Ray of Hope, you will begin to store damage on that target. If your team deals enough damage, you can instantly one-shot the enemy when the Ray of Hope ends. Once again, this is because Ray of Hope delays all damage until it ends. You just need to make Make sure that your team does enough DPS to make it damage instead of heal. And if you want to completely own a paladin, you can use mind control to give them a blessing of protection. This assumes of course that you also have a paladin on your own team, but once they have blessing of protection, they will be on forbearance, which means they won't be able to bubble for 30 seconds. Use this time to catch them off guard with huge burst and maybe even score a kill. Ever dream about flying across the map in an RBG? Well, you can as a goblin holy priest with this unique combo. Use the divine ascension talent to launch yourself into the air, then if you're a goblin, use your rocket jump followed by the humming black dragon scale trinket or levitate to launch you forward and slow fall. On maps like Twin Peaks, you can quickly zoom over the enemy team. This is bound to get you some angry whispers after the BG is over. You are probably really familiar with your mind game spell by now, but did you know that you can one shot almost any druid from 40% HP? Druids play a conduit called Well Honed Instincts, which will auto proc their frenzy at 40% HP. HP. So just wait until they're about to drop to 40%, then cast Mind Games and Shadow Word Death. Their frenzied proc will instantly be reversed, and they taste the sweet damage of your Shadow Word Death. Our final priest trick allows you to dispel unstable affliction without taking damage or getting silenced. Holy and Shadow Priests using the Greater Fade PvP talent can fade before casting MD. This will give them the Greater Fade immunity to the damage and silence you normally get from dispelling UA. This is good in arenas and especially good in RBGs where affliction warlocks are really popular. Want to know the best way to sap a target with Intervene? Just spam your sap a second time. The first sap will get intervened and if you sap immediately after, your second sap will immediately remove the Intervene button. Buff. We're not exactly sure why this works, but it just does. Although it's not a popular PvP talent, Death from Above can be used to do some crazy things, including immuning CC. Any CC that hits you when you jump into the air will be immune, allowing you to get some montage ready outplays in the arena. If you want to become immune to sap as a shaman, just use your earth elemental. While your earth Ellie is active and hitting a target, you will be stuck in combat for one minute, meaning that enemy rogues won't be able to sap you out of blind. Just make sure your elemental is hitting an enemy player and you will avoid the blind sap combo for an entire minute. As a warlock, you can interrupt twice in a row with this next trick. If your fell hunter is sacked with Grimyor of Sacrifice, you can use its spell lock then quickly resummon it with fell domination, allowing you to use spell lock a second time when your pet is out. Also, if you're ever in a situation where you need to spell lock while your pet is in CC, your medallion also removes any crowd control from your pet, meaning you can trinket kick someone while your pet is stuck in CC. And finally, moving on to warrior, there is a really cool trick to gain a DR and immunity to CC. If you use Bladestorm within a few milliseconds of a CC landing, not only will you immune the spell, but you will also be on DR for the
for that CC category. If mages and rogues needed one more thing to complain about, this is certainly it. And lastly, there are a few abilities you can use while blade storming. In case you didn't know, ignore pain, rallying cry, spell reflection, and die by the sword all work while blade storming. On top of that, you can continue auto attacking during blade storm, allowing you to generate rage while it's active. And there you have it, 50 WoW PvP tricks that only the biggest brain players know. Let's face it, maybe some of these things are bugs, or even clever uses of game mechanics. But in any case, you need to be aware of these things before they become too popular. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like, and to stay up to date on all future uploads, be sure to subscribe and turn on all notifications. That way, you'll never miss a video. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.